In today's video, we're going to check out a cool new Raspberry Pi 4 case called the Pyron Man from Sunfounder. The case looks like a mini desktop PC with LED lighting. It includes a number of additional cool features such as an M.2 SSD slot, tower cooler, OLED display, safe shutdown, and more. We'll unbox it, assemble it, and check out its features. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I would like to thank Sunfounder for sending over the Pyroman case for review. I've reviewed several of their products on this channel and they have all been thoughtfully designed. This one caught my eye as it looks like a mini PC with LEDs, an M.2 slot, and an OLED status display. I've not used anything quite like it with the Pi 4. Of course, to fully assemble it, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Raspberry Pis still remain difficult to locate, so before considering this case, make sure that you either have one available or are able to locate one. I'll place a link below for RPi Locator, which is a handy tool for sourcing a Raspberry Pi. You may also want an M.2 SSD such as this one. They are typically faster and provide more storage capacity over micro SD cards. Additionally, you may want a micro SD card. The capacity of the card is up to you and depends primarily on the amount of data you want to store. Let's take a look at everything included with this kit. First off, the documentation is excellent and steps you through the build process. Additionally, their online resources are very thorough with complete walkthroughs and sample configurations. The sides of the case are transparent acrylic. A custom Pyron Man board is included to connect everything together. Inside the case, you'll find a number of additional components, including FFC cables, thermal pads, a tower cooler, a power switch and fan, tower cooler support brackets and screwdriver, OLED display for the front of the case, a hardware pack which includes various screws, standoffs and nuts, an LED strip light, GPIO SD card and SSD bridge adapters, and of course the Pyramid case itself. The next segment will be a bit long as we go over the entire assembly process. If you're not interested at this time, there are chapter markers below so you can easily skip ahead. If you're assembling the Pyroman for the first time, there are more parts to this case than any other I put together. Without further ado, let's get started. We'll start the assembly by removing all eight of the screws holding the Pyron Man case together. Once fully disassembled, we'll have four different metal plates that we'll set aside for now. At this point, I'll go ahead and remove the adhesive backing to the acrylic panel. Now we'll screw together four M2.5 by 25 and four M2.5 by 18 nylon standoffs into the holes on the Pyron Man board. The longer standoffs go on the top of the board where the jumpers reside and the shorter standoffs on the bottom. Once all standoffs have been installed, it should look like this. We'll now install the FPC cable from the OLED screen into the Pyron Man board by gently lifting up on the black connector. Insert the cable such that the gold connectors are facing outward and then push down to lock it into place and make sure it's secure. Take the metal panel that has a cutout for the OLED screen, then carefully slide the screen through the slot, and remove the adhesive backing, and then affix the screen to the metal panel. Unscrew the nut from the back of the power switch, then insert the wires for the power button through the hole on the metal plate, and then reinstall the nut and tighten it down really good. Now we'll take the red wire from the power switch and plug it into the 5 volt line and the black into the ground or GND pin. It's very easy to do and here I'll start with the black wire and then the red. Then we can take the remaining green wires and plug them into either of the pin locations here. They don't go in any specific order. That looks good. Now take the RGB LED strip 
and we'll plug it into this three port connector labeled GND or ground, data, and D5V or digital 5 volts. Starting with the black wire at the far right, and then yellow in the middle, and red on the far left. In step number eight, we'll take the GPIO bridge and gently flip up on the black connector and plug in the FFC cable such that the blue side is facing you. Then press down on the black notch to lock it down into place. We'll do the same on the connector on the Pyron Man board by raising the tab, insert the opposite end of the FFC cable, and then press down on the black notch to lock it into place. Once done, it should look like this. Yeah, we still have a little ways to go, but it's not as bad as it looks. Much of it will go pretty quick. We'll take this small SD card bridge and go ahead and pull out the black tab. Then we'll install the FFC cable. We'll do the same for the connector on the Pyroman board. Now take the Raspberry Pi 4 and plug the SD card bridge into the micro SD slot on the Pi 4. Using four of the M2.5 by 7 plus 6 standoffs, we'll go ahead and secure the Pi 4 to the Pyroman board. For this step, you may find it helpful to start by finger tightening and then use the included tool to tighten the standoffs further. Don't over tighten or they may break off. Now we'll simply take the GPIO bridge and plug it into the Pi 4. And this completes step number 12 and we're now at the halfway mark. We'll now prepare the tower cooler for installation. We'll need two of the M2.5 by six screws. Go ahead and position the bracket as shown. They are not identical, so make sure you install the correct one to each side. Then remove the backing to both sides of the thermal pads and position them at the bottom of the tower cooler in the orientation that you see here. They will make contact with the CPU on the Pi 4 and keep it cool. Take the ice tower cooler and using four M2.5 by six screws, tighten the cooler to the standoffs on the Pi 4. Things are about to get more interesting as we will begin assembling the sides of the case. I'll go ahead and remove the protective backing from the acrylic panel, then secure the acrylic plate that has cutouts for the power, HDMI, and audio to the frame using four M2.5 by six screws. We'll then take the top of the Pyroman case, remove the backing to the RGB strip lights, and position it towards the center of the underside of the metal plate. Then align the holes and install the two screws to hold it in place. On the other acrylic plate, we'll install four M2.5 nuts and M2.5 by 12 screws. Simply insert the nut into the back of the fan and the screws from the opposite side passing through the plate to the nut at the back of the fan. The screws didn't tighten down as well as I had expected, but were secure enough to hold it into place. Now plug in the red power and black ground wires into the connector on the Pyroman board. Position the plate and loosely screw in the 8 M2.5 by 6 screws, which you can tighten once all the metal pieces are in place. Deviating slightly from the instructions, I'll now install the metal plate over the connectors at the back and tighten it down with the M2.5 by 6 screws. To save one removal step for the bottom plate, I went ahead and installed the Samsung 1TB M.2 drive into the port and tighten it down with the included screw. Then attach the bottom plate and secure it with M2.5 by 6 screws on the bottom and the sides of the case. Remove the backing to the EVA foam non-slip pads and position it between each of the two sets of screws on the bottom of the case. Then remove the screen protector over the OLED display and install the acrylic plate over the power switch, the IR receiver, and the OLED display. Then attach the plate with four M2.5 by six screws. And lastly, if you'll be using an internally installed SSD, you'll want to insert the SSD bridge between the USB 3.0 port and the SSD port. At this point, we have completed the assembly process. 
As I mentioned earlier, this case has, without a doubt, the most components of any Pi 4 case I've ever used. However, I really dig the look of it. In the next section, we'll quickly go over the OS setup. I'll place a link in the description below for the Pirate Man guide on the SunFounder website. Let's quickly go over some of the main features. The case looks like a mini PC for your Raspberry Pi. The tower cooler can cool 100% CPU load down to 39 degrees Celsius. It has a nearly 1 inch OLED display for showing the CPU utilization, temperature, disk usage, IP address, and RAM. There is an M.2 SATA SSD connection. It has an RGB fan, 16 addressable RGB LEDs, an IR receiver, external GPIO extender, and a solid construction of aluminum and acrylic side panels. From the left sidebar, we'll select installing the OS. Again, excellent information here that steps you through the entire process of installing Pi OS to a micro SD card using Pi Imager. Pi Imager is available for Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu x86, and of course, Pi OS also. I'll take this 128GB micro SD card and insert it into my PC and launch Pi Imager. Select Choose OS. I'll go with the recommendation of Pi OS 32-bit, then click the Choose Storage button and select the 128GB micro SD card. As explained in their guide, if you click the gear icon in the lower right, you can also perform some additional steps, such as setting your username and password, configure the wireless LAN by entering your SSID and Wi-Fi password. It's also very important to select your Wi-Fi country, otherwise you won't see any 5 GHz SSIDs in the list. I'll click Save, and then the right button, select Yes, and Pi Imager will download and install Pi OS to the micro SD card. It will take a few minutes, so I'll skip past some of that. Once done, click the Continue button and close out a Pi Imager. Moving to the back of the Pyroman, while I do have an SSD installed, we'll talk about that in a moment. For now, we'll insert the micro SD we just set up in the slot at the back. We'll plug in the power. On the side, there is a power port for powering another device over USB-C, HDMI 1 and 2, and the audio jack. I'll plug in the micro HDMI cable in the HDMI 1. I'll use the official Raspberry Pi keyboard and mouse. While it looks nearly identical to the Pi 400, it's just a keyboard and mouse. And I'll plug it into an available USB 2.0 port and power on the Pi. With Pi OS now booted up, I'll switch to the video capture so you can more clearly see the display. Here I've opened Chromium, and going back to their documentation, we'll start with the option Set Up the Pyron Man. First, we need to set up the power button and IR receiver. I'll simply copy this command, open a terminal, and paste the command to launch the nano text editor with the config.txt file. I'll then page down to the bottom of the file, and then we'll move back over to the browser and copy these two lines and paste it into our config.txt file. And then I'll go ahead and press Control S and Control X to save and exit. Now we'll reboot by typing sudo reboot. Now that the Pi is rebooted, we need to install the Pyron Man module. Again, we'll copy the commands here and then paste them into a terminal session and then just press enter. The module and its dependencies will get downloaded. I'll press in here, and then something exciting just happened. The OLED display came to life, displaying the CPU utilization, temperature, local IP address, and of course, the LEDs came on. There is much more you can do here. For example, you can type pyronman-c to view the current configuration. You can also make additional adjustments, such as when you want the fan to turn on and at what temperature values to use, keep the OLED screen always on or not, change the RGB colors, and much more. You can customize it however you want. There is also a sample command for changing the RGB strip color. Let's take a look at that. When we run the command, the LED colors change from the default blue color to a more white looking color. But that's not too exciting, so let's change the color to our own custom color. I went to hdmlcolorcodes.com, selected a color, and copied the top value. 
Then press up arrow in the terminal session and change the color code to green. Yeah, that looks better. Now we'll do the same thing and change it to red. That looks nice. But definitely need to try Wagner's Tech Talk Purple. That's perfect. Using the Pyron Man command with the minus RS option, you can specify the RGB display style. There are four different styles, such as breadth, which is the default, leap, which is what you're seeing here, flow, and raise up. And here's a close-up of the OLED display, which is showing the CPU utilization, the CPU temperature, the local IP address, RAM used and available, as well as the storage used and available. Another important feature of this case is that you can hold down the power button and it will perform a safe shutdown of the Raspberry Pi. Regarding the internal SSD, one thing I did want to mention is that I've been using this case also with PIN, which allows you to boot from a micro SD card, then launch one of several operating systems from the list. After launching, the operating systems reside on the SSD, not the micro SD. This case worked perfectly with PIN, and I'll place a link in the upper right to a detailed video that explains how to set it up. After some period of time, unless you set the OLED display to always on, it will cut off. To turn it back on, just quick press the power button. I wanted to check out the performance of the SSD under Twister OS with all the latest updates applied. I launched Raspberry Pi Diagnostics and ran the tests, and the results were pretty good. With 312K sequential read-write, 19K random write, and 20K random read. Not bad. The next test was to make sure the ice tower cooler and fan were working properly. I ran a stress test to bring the CPU up to 100% utilization and set up the Pyroman to kick in the fans when the temperature reached 55 degrees. Once again, the Pyroman worked as expected. The fan sound is noticeable, but not excessive. I could also put my hand on the left side and feel warm air from the cooler, also as expected. There was no visible flickering, and when the CPU reached 55 degrees, the fan would drop the temperature down. That brings us to the end of another video. Overall, I really love this case. It turns your Raspberry Pi into a mini desktop PC-like case, complete with LED lighting. The assembly will take about 30 to 40 minutes, but it's well worth it. The software integration with the hardware in this case is very well thought out. If I had to make one recommendation for improvement, it would be to use a standard HDMI connector instead of the micro HDMI. That would make it just a little bit better. What do you think of the Pyron Man case? Comment below with your thoughts or questions. I'll also leave links below on where you can pick one up. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and want to see more content like this in the future, I hope you'll consider doing so. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.